Yo. Yeah. Hey, Sean. It's James Johnson here. Hey. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, was, I lost track down there. Oh, no, no. You good, man. How come it said Charles Morris on your phone? Do that? It says Charles Morris on your caller ID. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's not me. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what it says. It says Charles Morris from Kentucky on your caller ID, oh, bro. Oh, well. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's not me. I'm not Charles Morris. <laughs> I guess it's because probably he had this. He probably had my number before. That's, I got it. That's so. a, that's a possibility, man. That's a possibility. All right, man. So, uh, thank you for calling, uh, checking in. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, to chop it up, man. Uh, before we get started, um, we can go ahead and introduce yourself. To the uh to the people and let you know let me let let them know what you was doing before you got in the trucking. Well, I'm James Johnson. My I'm a uh, professional flatbed driver and driver talent acquisition specialist for uh, JLE Industries. And what I was doing here before I got into trucking was I was an aircraft crew chief with the U.S. government for civil service. I worked down in Del Rio, Texas at Laughlin Air Force Base on trainer planes. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and how, how many years you was in the service? I spent 10 and one half years in the military. I was, uh, I was with both the Air Force and the Army National Guard out of Kentucky. Oh, and I went one active duty term over into Iraq in 2011. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, hey, thank you for your service, bro. I, I you know, I appreciate uh, I appreciate the sacrifice uh, that you guys have done for us to give us the freedoms that we have right now. So, thank you very much for that. Why you uh, why you didn't do the why you didn't do the 20 and out, my G? Well, the reason why I didn't do the 20 is because I got hurt over in Iraq. And I also want to tell you, thank you. I appreciate you, too. By the way, I appreciate everybody who appreciates all of us as veterans and the ones that are active duty right now also yeah, out in harm's way. Yeah. They're doing it all for us. But, uh, yeah, I got hurt over in uh, Iraq. I, got, I had a back injury that put me a... Uh, Kind of out of service for doing the, like the physical training and everything else mm -hmm. for it. And I wound up having to get a medical discharge in 2015. So I've been out since uh, April 2015. So do they, and, but let me ask you this, you know, you, you, you got hurt while, you know, while you was in, you know, while you was in active duty. Uh, do, do, uh -huh. do they, uh, I know this is not like a retirement, but do they still, <laughs> Confiscate you some kind of way by you know by being a being a disabled veteran. Oh yeah, they do. I get uh, compensation pension from the uh, VA. I've got so it's like a seventy percent disability with the VA, and I get paid from them every month. Awesome. But, you know that's a, that uh, that there in a sense really you know doesn't really stretch out for a whole lot in a month's time so. And I wound up having to go back out here and kind of supplement the income with it to make and help make ends meet and uh, meet the bills with my family and my darling wife. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. So did you did you get your CDL while you was in the service, or you got it after you got out? No, I got it after I got out of the Air Force. I and after I was. Uh, after I got out of civil service in 2001, I went to a went to a truck driving school in Delta, Texas, and got my CDL down there. And I started out with a well, my first trucking company I started out with was Prime Incorporated out of Springfield, Missouri. Okay, okay, had a real good out, trainer. Rocked out with Prime for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I had a I had a real good trainer over there. 
if he ever, if he listens to any of this here, his name was Antonio Gonzalez. Okay, shout call out him, to Antonio himself, Gonzalez. Yep, called himself Eight Ball. <laughs> now back now back in back in 2021, you know, about 20 years ago, during the now you know we're you know doing uh millennials uh, time. Uh, was you trained in a in a manual or in an automatic? I was trained in a manual. Oh, okay, okay, and that was that was before yeah, had, that was before manual. the that was before they they changed over to automatics. Oh yeah, most most definitely. I I trained on a ten speed, a super ten when I was in uh, CDL school, and I drove ten speed with Prime, and my biggest one I drove was an eighteen speed with a uh, company called. Allen Farmer Trucking that was in uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Okay, okay, that's what's I've, up. All right, so fast forward to uh, to modern day. Uh, you you are you 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 reached out to me uh, via uh, via comment on uh, on wanted to make the call videos and you want to come on to uh, share your experiences and promote uh, the company JLE. Am I correct? That's correct. All right. J J L J L E Industries uh is a trucking company out of where? We're out of Dunbar, Pennsylvania. And that's our main terminal. And I if I recall right, looking in one of our uh newsletters, I think we are getting a satellite uh facility out, I believe, in California. Okay. Okay. I believe how, it's what I believe it's what it said. How out of your twenty years, how long you been how long you been with uh J L E? I have been with J L E now since March of this year. I've been there approximately just a little under well, maybe a little over seven months now. And I love it. It's this is a this is a company that is is fantastic. They are not a mega com you know, not a big mega mega company mm -hmm. like some of the others. And we have about I think three about four hundred trucks total. And how, how did you how did we're, you come we're building up? How how did you come across them? Like how how did you uh how did you come across them? Because I'm about to play devil's advocate with you for a little bit. <laughs> Well, I came across them on an ad that they had in uh, in on Facebook, and okay. I looked at that ad, and it, it said they were looking for people to pull military loads. So I I looked at it and I said, "Hmm, well, I'll go ahead and I'll try this." That's right up your alley. At the time, I was yeah. At the time, I was unemployed, so I went ahead and I took and called the, one of the recruiters there, and I talked with them. In fact, I talked with the recruiter that you talked with on your one episode of Make the Call mm -hmm. named Katera Wheat, and I talked with her for a little bit, and then I talked with a recruiter named Ryan over there, and we got, you know, we got everything squared away, and got, they got me a slot and got me into JLE Industries. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So now you only been with the company for seven months, my 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 G. You you think you you think you got enough time in to to you know to give you know your your best experience with the company? Oh yeah, I can. I've got plenty of time to give that to give that a good experience with the company. Okay, they are they they actually have treated me very very well. When I first got first uh, signed on with them, the orientation they took and flew me from out of Kentucky over to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Then they picked me up with the shuttle there at the airport and took us down. Well, took me down to uh, Dunbar and put me up in a really really nice hotel. They've got they've got a hotel that they use over there. It's I believe the I believe they call it the Hilt. It's the Hilton Hotel. Over there, in uh, just outside of uh, Dunbar in Connellsville, and they they put us up in a very nice room. And for the time there, next morning they had the shuttle out in front of the uh, 
hotel and picked us up, took us over to the terminal. And the terminal itself, it is, it's a beautiful terminal. I mean, it's, it's immaculate. It's, a, it's small, but it's very immaculate on the inside. I was, I was very impressed with it. When I got over there, the first thing that, the I did first thing that myself and one other driver that was in class with me for the week, he was a start out as a lease purchase driver. Mm-hmm. We both were the first ones to inaugurate their new center of excellence classroom area. Okay. okay. And I was, I was very proud of being able to do that. Okay. That's so, what's up. But we got it. We had a good time. It was a, it was a four, actually about a five day orientation. We went through a driving test and we went through securement while we were there. And we did a lot of, um, we did some book work in the, in the classroom. Now, JLE is, is a flat, JLE is a flatbed company, right? They do flatbed yes, loads. Sir. We're, yes, sir. We're just flatbed only. All right. Do they? And we have. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say. Oh, do we they... have some of our flatbeds. Yeah. <laughs> we have some of our flatbeds. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, some of our flatbeds, they turned into the uh, Conestoga vans. So we got, so we've got actually flatbeds and Conestogas. Okay. Okay. We're most, we're mostly falling flatbed freight though. So do they, do do they, uh, as far as their secur- their securement training, uh, do they do they train drivers right out of right out of school, or do you need do you need some experience with flatbed in order to drive with them? They require about they require one year's experience with your flatbed. Um, if you're a veteran, well, actually, they want. Not just with veterans, they with the non veterans they would like to have two years if you can, but they will accept you at one year if you've done you know, just straight flatbed. Me, I did flatbed for about almost four years and I've done military loads also, so therefore I my experience was right on the right on target, actually a little bit more for them. But uh they they do their securement. What they do is they'll show us how you know they'll have us go and train on a uh, trailer that they have set up for different things, well, different types of uh, loads like coils, uh, slinkies, pipe. Uh, what else? They got they got about several different about four or five different things on the trailer that they'll actually have you take and do the actual securement on there and our securement um our securement person named john newcomer takes and he'll look at it he'll tell you what you know what you need to do or with it or how to improve yourself and be able to show them the show them the actual way or explain the actual way that they want it done because we we believe in a lot of safety. I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of safety. And there's for our loads. Doesn't matter what it is, how many thousand pounds it is. You know, it can be a light load. We believe in safety. Over securement of it is nothing nothing short of being being safe. All right. It's a, they can say it's all overkill, but no, that's. The more you have on it, the better. All right. So during orientation, you know, of course, you know, the regular rigmarole, paperwork and all that good stuff. Uh, Pre-employment, the pre-employment, do they do urine or hair follicles or both? Uh, We do. They do the urine drug test. Oh, okay. So they don't. They they don't do the hair follicle. Oh, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So. Being at the company for seven months, how do you, you know, you 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 already gave us, you know, how how you feel about it. Um, but do you think that this is one of the companies that you might want to retire from? 
Yeah, if I can hold out that long, yes, sir, I would. I would. I would retire from them without uh-huh. no problem. All right. Now I'm a, I'm one. I'm one of what they call the uh, one of the old guys. <laughs> okay. Not, JLE doesn't call us the JLE doesn't call us the old guy. I call myself one of the old guys, the old veterans out here from the trucking industry, and I I would retire from you know okay. as long as my as, long as my good body will hold up and uh, be able to go chain strap and tarp. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Now now you over here now James you over here giving us the good and 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 all that and all that good stuff, but what are what are some of the stress of this company, man? There, there's there's got to be not all companies is 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 good, bro. What what is some of the stress that that this company could could give you? I really haven't noticed any stresses. Uh, sometimes you get out here and um, your your loads every once in a while. It just like your loads, you'll be sitting for a while or, you know, waiting for the shipper to load you. Um, we get, when we go in to get steel in different places, it's like usually we take and, um, you know, have to wait a long while to get into a dock and then the dock is, you know, takes a little bit to get into the, there. But then, you know, like for steel, that's kind of slow because they got to use the overhead cranes Mm -hmm. to pick up their steel off the floor and then put it onto the deck. But most of the time, it's just not really, and not really a whole lot. Now, being me as a company driver, I keep moving. Being a flatbedder, what what was some of the, what was some of the odd freight that you hauled? What what was what was some of the odd freight? The ideal freight? No, not ideal. What was, no, what, was what was one of the oddest uh, freight that you had to haul? Oh, oddball freight. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, I think my oddball freight would be some railroad track parts. Oh, okay. For like switches, they call them. You know, they call them. Uh, the railroad people call them frogs. Mm-hmm. It's little. It's little parts that they have to use in the switching area to align the switches up and, you know, make sure that the wheels go in properly to the right to right switch area so on the curve. Well, when they go and try to go in, like, to a siding or go into a loading area in the main terminals. But uh, I think that's probably about the... About the odd, about the most odd thing I've hauled with right. so far. So being so being a flatbedder, uh, you know, for for JLE, uh, what what mm-hmm. what what in your opinion is the best part about being a flatbedder with JLE? The best part about it for me is the equipment. We got very good equipment, and the way that the respect that you get as a driver over there with the company, my, these guys, these folks at JLE industries over the terminal, they love us drivers. Mm -hmm. We are their bread and butter for them. And as I, as I say it to everybody, it's like, when we get paid, they get paid. Mm. If we don't get paid, well then they don't get paid. So the staff and the, Staff and everybody over there, they they love us. We're we're the, we're the priority for them. Okay. And, and along with the pay, the pay is very very great. So now, they, and so, one issue that you had. So would they? Yeah, and one issue that you had there, you said that the the pay was, you know, some of the pay was like fifty five to sixty cents. Well, mm-hmm. that's kind of gotten changed, and now we go we go by percentages over there. Okay. The company drivers they do they do twenty seven percent of whatever the load is that we get and I believe that the lease purchase guys do seventy five percent of their loads. All right, so you since you're getting paid percentage, what what what's what's the average that a that, that a driver can make over there every week? Company. 
if you run good, if you run good, you get good loads, you can make about close to 11 to 11 to 1400 a week and on great weeks you can make up to close about close to about 19 to okay so we're looking at about that's, we, that's, we're, that's looking at a, we, we're looking at a company that that's you could good. potentially make about 80 to 90k a year yes sir you can you can rock over here and you know you okay. just put you put the determination to it and you want to run you know you you're they'll and they'll run you they're, they're good. They're very good. All right, that's what's uh, up. So if I'm interested, so if I'm interested in driving for that company, though, uh, is it better? Is it is it better for me to go uh, lease than go in company? That depends basically on how you would, how you yourself would like to do, how you and yourself would like to earn the money. Myself. When I started out driving, I had to go to a lease purchase with Prime, mm -hmm. and I, I really didn't like it. It didn't it didn't help me out much. There was maybe one one year of it that I had a little over about a hundred thousand, mm. but then making yeah running a run with Prime. But then when you take out all the maintenance, the truck fee. Well, truck payment, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, tires, fuel, and your insurances. It it drops basically your base pay out of all that. What you really net with it was about fifty thousand dollars. Oh, that's so ugly! Right I just, here. I just, yeah, I just decided to stay company driver. And me, I, I've, I've made really, really good money so far over here. I. I keep the truck running and go and, you know, I go and my driver manager, he's a very great driver manager. We get, we get along very, very well. I always we, say, a lot of, I, a lot of folks. That, I always say if, if, if you get along with your driver manager, your time with the company is going to be great. Uh-huh. Yeah. My driver manager, he's, he's fantastic. He, he and I, we both will, you know, we'll both coordinate with each other. And, you know, if I got something that, Sounds good. Now I'll, I'll bounce it off of him. Tell him, say, "What do you think, boss?" And he he'll tell me, say, "Okay, sounds like plan. Let's go with it." Or you know, if he's got something, he'll bounce it off of me, and I'll say, "All right, that sounds good. Let's do it. We'll right. run." All right. We, so we go with it. So how difficult? How 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 difficult is it for you know a new driver, uh, a new driver to get in with with the company? Well, if you're just getting your CDL license, it uh, it is a little bit hard because they would like to have you to have experience. Mm -hmm. They are, from what I understand, they are going to try to maybe get a program going over there to where maybe we can get some of the newer newer folks or newer students or newer drivers mm -hmm. out here. And try to get them in to and train them, and then get them with a trainer. To, they are going to try to do that. So okay. that I can basically tell you right now is just uh, it's in the works. All I right. I don't know very much more about that one. All right, now now James, uh, you're a veteran. Of course, you got uh you got that good veterans benefits, so you don't have to worry about uh. <laughs> You don't have to worry about, you know, benefits from, you know, ever again. But what about but what about the company benefits? What what do what do they offer for new drivers there? Uh, the company benefits, they offer you uh health insurance and they do offer a life insurance policy mm -hmm. as well as the health on the health insurance it's like for dental and um vision and whatever basically you need you can choose it you, know, you can choose what the health benefits as to what you or your family could you know would need they do have a 401k retirement plan you can mm -hmm. contribute to that and a lot of they have a lot of little uh little other perks 
for the drivers, you know, if you they got a good safety bonus, you go out and they, you get a good inspection, then you get like a bonus of say maybe twenty five dollars or fifty dollars, something around in there. Mm-hmm. Or they'll give you they'll give you a gift certificate or a uh, gift card for that. And the other they have other things that they they also give gifts gift cards for. Okay. As well as they they have what they call a uh, cash for coins mm-hmm. option. You can when you go and take and get your load picked up and get your load delivered. After you get your load delivered, you can go and do a survey for your shipper and receiver that you had on the di- that particular load assignment. Mm-hmm. And you can tell them, you know, what you thought about the shipper or receiver, if they were good, if they were bad, oh, you know, we, if something we could, was we could, bad. We can pretty, pretty much tell. We can pretty much tell them how we really feel, right? Yeah, to a degree. You know, you don't want to go and sit there and cuss them out or anything like that. <laughs> but you, you can you nah, can tell nah, them nah, the old nah, like, nah, they, nah. They, they, you know, like the shipper did a good job. Or the receiver did a good job, or if they did something that could use some improvement, then you tell them, you know, what they needed to improve on, or if they were slow at getting you taken care of, well, you tell them, yeah, they were a little slow, but, you know, there wasn't a whole lot that you can do. It wasn't the fault of the driver. Okay. You, know, just, you had to wait for them, basically. But you can, you can make a good honest comments all about right that's what's up shippers and receivers that's what's up so james man being there being that you you're with jle you know seven months in sounds like they're doing real good for you you know treating you well treating you good uh what what tips and or advice would you give someone that might be interested into the company well as a driver talent manager acquisition recruiter i would be willing to tell them anything that they would like to know you know that i that i know as as a driver for them and you know they they don't believe me on the pay i'm willing to show them what you know my paychecks were like every week and those paychecks you know even the first five weeks of my pay i was able to take care of a whole lot of small bills and some credit cards that that at our house, and it, it really helped out, and was able to take and help pay off my darling wife's car the rest of the way. So it's it, it's you earn very good money there, and okay. you, if, if you the best thing is if you're not happy there, well then you're not going to be happy anywhere else because mm. you can be happy here with JLE. They they treat you very well. They treat you like a person. Not like some of these mega companies who they treat you like a number, basically. All right. Our guys, they they treat you like a person. Do you they they know you got a name, able to they will call and they will talk to you by your name. That's what's up. You know, man. they don't That's just say up. driver or number basically. What, what about the you said the equipment uh that you drive over there is uh is some nice equipment. Uh, what what do they got, and what amenities do they have inside the trucks? Oh yeah, we have. Well, my my truck here, I I'm driving a 2020 Freightliner Cascadia, mm-hmm. and it it has the automatic. Uh, it has inside here. We have the people net, the GPS on there, as well as we have a we have a TV and with satellite system hmm. in most of the trucks right now. The, anything, you know, anything about right now from 2020 and newer, we have newer Freightliner Cascadias that are coming in. Plus, we also have the Kenworth T680s. Hmm. And those, I believe, are the third. I'm not sure about the new ones, but the, a few of the other ones are uh, 13 speed manuals. So, I've seen most of the least purchased guys get a hold of them, but 
there's also a few lease purchase guys that'll take a Freightliner Cascadia too at the same time. Nice. The equipment itself, it, it it's very you know in very very good very very good shape and very very nice equipment. All right, so it 20, runs well. So you you rocking out in the 2020? That's what's up. Uh, mm -hmm. TV, satellite, uh, people net for the uh, for the uh, e logs. Uh, any 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 driver cameras uh -huh. in there, man? Yeah, we do have cameras. We have one. We have a driver camera that looks at us, and we also have one that faces out. But you know, the cameras, you know, they're basically for you know, the dash cams and the one looking at you as driver. It's basically there to cover your hind end as well as it covers the company's hind end too. You know, they they want to make sure you're doing everything right. At the time, you know, like if an incident comes up, they want to make sure that you know, you weren't falling asleep or you weren't sitting there on your phone texting and all that. That's one thing of a pet peeve that they do not allow while you're driving mm -hmm. is they do not want you to be on your phone while you're driving at all. And Even with that, a Bluetooth? You know, that, well, if you got a Bluetooth, you know, a headset... Okay, that's fine, but they don't want you holding your right, you know, right, 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 and holding your phone. Right, that's what's up. Okay, okay, all right. So uh, JLE up in uh, PA, uh, that's where the orientation is is going to be held at for you new guys that's interested in uh, coming to uh, JLE. Um, of course, you know if y'all feel some kind of way about the trucks with the with the cameras in them. I mean, you know, majority. Not all, but majority of the companies are going that way for, you know, safety and insurance purposes. Um, would JL, you That's know, exactly you already, right. you, so you already said that, um, JLE requires a little bit of, uh, a little bit of experience, but do they, but is, is, is they going to be, you know, would they be in the future? Uh, would they be, would they help? somebody to get their cdls if they don't have them would they be able to do that or no that that part i'm not sure about i basically i i can't answer that one i because i'm really not sure about that question on there they may probably think about it but you know they also have to think about the insurance for you know, insurance liability too likewise with helping people like that. I think they would probably more so like have them get their experience first before mm -hmm. they come over to us. But you know, that that's a little bit out of my ballpark here. That's more so for the senior staff right. to take a look at and see if it would be feasible for our, you know, for the company. What about a, what about a sign on bonus? We do have sign-on bonuses. Yes, we we have about a five thousand dollars sign-on bonus. Okay. And they, my bonus. Okay, I I get it, and I get um, about a hundred dollars every week for my. Uh, I got an initial five. I think it was initial five hundred, and then after that, I'll get a hundred dollars every week until the uh, five thousand is all paid for. Okay. And that's actually to the paycheck. We have different uh, different fees that they pay for. It's like an accessory fee. You know, if you have to get something for your truck, uh, mm -hmm. if you're a company driver, you know, you have to get uh, different equipment. You can get a, they'll give you an advance to get that equipment, and then you they take care of it, and the they take care of my fuel and my maintenance. Uh, lease purchase guys, you know, they have to do all, they have to do their maintenance and they get, they can put money into an escrow account to take care of that maintenance. But, um, along with their truck payments and, you know, all the other, all the other goodies you get with the lease purchase program, I should say. All but right. anyway, they, um, but they do have different, you know, different perks like tarp fee is $35 for us, mm -hmm. the tarp. Uh, we have detention time pay that is good. I think that's about fifty, sixty dollars 
for retention pay, uh, I believe it is. All right. Um, layover, layover pay. If you have to get laid over, that's about sixty dollars a day. All right. And they, they, yeah, they have some. They have some good, good perks. What about uh? Yeah, good, good benefits. What What about um? What What about they? You, you know anything about they? They They policies for felons. Are Are felons able to get in and 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 get in and get on? With uh, with JLE, that would depend on what it was. They would have to take a look at that and see if that would qualify to be able to let you guys, let them guys, come in and work for them. But otherwise, um. I think if it's something a little bit on the serious side, they would probably say, "Well, we can't help you." All on right. That part. But you know, it's minor, minor stuff. You know, say like a maybe if you had a accident that was no fault of your own, or you got a speeding ticket that was, you know, you shouldn't have gotten. Which shame on you if you did get a speeding ticket, but uh. Something like that. They're it's like a pretty much a misdemeanor. They're willing to check it out, and then you know if it, if they say it's okay, you can go ahead and drive with us. Then you know they'll go ahead and let it let it go. All right. Go ahead and right. let it, they'll they'll know about it, but yet they'll you know if it meets their criteria and says that you know it's not going to harm anybody, or if it's Pretty much, just you know, something minor. They'll they'll talk with you. And they'll All most right. time they'll usually let you drive. All right, my man James, uh, driver, recruiter, ambassador, uh, seven months strong, twenty years deep. Uh, JLE Enterprises. If you guys are interested in JLE Enterprises, I'll leave uh, James's information. Uh, so that you can reach out to the company and make sure that you mention James uh, mm-hmm. on the application and let them know that you heard this podcast and uh, and um, and guys get on in there and see what uh, see what JLE can uh, offer for you. James, I appreciate you coming on to the show, man, and um, and shouting out your company, uh, letting us know what JLE is all about. Uh, oh, you're very welcome. You are definitely a citizen. So, if anything else should pop up for the company that you wanna that you wanna get out, man, make sure you know give us a call back and uh, and uh, let us know what's up. I sure will. I'll be glad to. I'll be glad to talk to anybody. You know, they can they can give me a call. My number, which is two seven zero four zero one five eight eight two. I'll be glad to talk with them if. You know, I'm a, I'm available and I'm not working because I do run quite a quite a bit here. I run pretty good out here. All but right. I, that yep. and I can also refer them to my uh, talent ambassador coach. They can they can talk with her, which is Katera. Well, I tell you what, would you? We, I I tell you what, get, go ahead and text or better, what you do? Did you email me? You you email me right? I do got your email right. I did. Email me, yes, email, sir. email me all the information you would like for me to put into the description, and I will put everything in the description so that people can uh can link up with you and JLE. Well, basically, it's just my email. They can do, they can do that, and then they can uh, when they get to, when they get to talk with me, I can tell them when you go in for your orientation. And well, you like it, and you want to go in for your orientation. You apply for it. They can uh, use me as a referral, and my truck number is one hundred three four six. That that's what I'm saying. Make sure you send all that information over to me so I can put it in the description. Okay, I will do as such. All right, all right, James. Everybody, thank you very much, brother man, for coming on, and um, and for anybody that's interested in JLE Enterprises. Uh, again, it would be in the description below. Give them a call. Make sure you let them know that uh, that James and Lockout Men sent you. 
and hopefully they'll be able to be a good company for you. James, thank you very much, and I'll holler at you later, bro. Welcome there, Lockdown, man. You be safe out there likewise. All right, sir. You take it easy. Yes, sir. We'll talk to you a little later now.